Isn't it weird, like, if you ask a, a little kid, what do you want to be when you grow up? Isn't it weird that the answer is never judge? I mean, often you ask little kids, and they go a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer, as if those professions are the pinnacle of all professions. You know, I want to meet a kid who goes like butcher. You know, you ask a kid, what do you want to be in the future? And they go something like a baggage handler at the airport. Now, that would have been an interesting kid. But um, I can remember when I was a kid, I, I never wanted to do an ordinary thing. You know, because when you're a child, your brain simplifies things. You don't really think of a profession being a profession, per se. You just look at people who do it, and you think whether you want to be them or not. So I used to look at, for example, I had a friend whose father is a famous rich doctor, but I, I never liked him. I mean, the, the, the dude was always busy, and his house smelled like kinder needle milk. I never liked that. So I didn't want to become that. I remember wanting to become someone interesting, you know, happy and interesting. And I remember very clearly that I wanted money, even at a young age, because I come from a poor family. So we struggled a lot. My father is a working class man. You know, he, he pushed through life. He worked 70, 80 hours a week. So money was an issue. So I remember wanting to have money in my life and wanting to do something really interesting. So I set out to do that, but just like everybody else, reality slapped me in the face. You know, the first job that I got, I was studying, um, so I didn't have enough money to continue my study. So I decided to get a job, entry-level job through a connection. You know, it was data entry for an airline. So I sat there typing away. You know, it was cargo air wearables, so very boring job. Um, so I, I kept doing this for two years. I remember feeling really depressed after a couple of years because I, I, I think you know, most of you can relate that if you do something you don't enjoy, I mean, who enjoys data entry? I don't know, unless you're on drugs, you're high and sitting there typing, you're never going to enjoy it. So that's what happened with me. I, I started feeling depressed. But People who are depressed, they, they often don't know that they are depressed. I mean, unless they get a professional diagnosis or they stop being depressed, only then they know that I was depressed for a long time. So I was doing this job two years and I got to a point, you know, it's the same thing every single day, extremely boring. The stress that I have to work five days a week, every day about 10 hours, finishing a thick pile of air wables. That wasn't pleasant at all. So I remembered when I was being a kid, and I said to myself, well, th this is not interesting. I mean, it's, it's getting me some money, but this is not interesting. So I tried to make it interesting because I wanted to fulfill that dream when I was a kid. Interesting and money. Those things I wanted to fulfill through an entry-level job. So I did what I had to do. I saw pattern in numbers. Uh, I saw that certain commodities are being shipped at certain times of the year. Um, so I concluded a plan. It was really not rocket science. It was pure observation. You know, I saw a pattern, movements of certain goods at certain times of the year. And I proposed a plan to my boss. Luckily enough, he took me seriously. And he said, you know what, let's give it a shot. So we offered special discounts to certain commodities at specific times of the year, and hallelujah, it worked. So the company made more profit, and as a result, I got a promotion. And I was, I was so happy for about like a couple of days. And then I was depressed again, because that's what happens. You do a boring job, and that's what happens to you. But you get sucked into it. You get sucked into this bubble of comfort, knowing that tomorrow is nothing extraordinary. I mean, it's just, it's going to be just like today, just like the day before. It is extremely convenient to go and do the same job every single day because you know the outcome. There's no challenges. You know what's going to happen to you, right? And I see many of you are students. I mean, I see young faces. Maybe you can't relate to this, but picture this. You're studying something like biochemistry. 
and by mistake you stepped into a lecture about corporate governance and you're too shy to, 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 to get out. So you just sit through that lecture, which is two hours. Now imagine doing this for 10 hours every single day. It's, it's not fun. It is extremely depressing. But for some reason, people don't change. People who do boring jobs, they keep doing them, thinking that tomorrow may be different. So the equation is that I trade in now in order to have a better future. But if you think about it, future is a raw concept. It's always now, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's literally always now. The future never arrives. What are you going to do? You're going to keep doing the same job every single day for 20 years. So what's going to happen to you within those 20 years? You're an accountant. You do your job well. You become the head of your department. And then what? What's going to happen? What, I mean, what, what is the best case scenario if you stay doing your boring job every single day? The best case scenario is that you keep doing what you're doing at a larger scale, and you get paid slightly more. You never become rich. Never. So what are you supposed to do then? If you have this problem, if you're going to do your job every single day, bored, not having enough money, and you keep doing it, this is, I'm sorry, th there's no good way to put it. This is extremely stupid. Because if you're doing it for the money, well, you have to notice you're not making that money that you want to make. And you're doing exactly the same thing, hoping for a better outcome. But there's no better outcome. We all know the best case scenario. I mean, look at your father, for example. You know, most of us, we have fathers who worked 30 years in the same company or doing the same thing. That's it. This is your future right there. When you're a kid, you look at your father. Do you really want to become that? Mostly kids say, no, I want to do something different. So what's stopping you then? Why don't you tend your, your resignation today? You go and you say, you know what, that's it. I'm walking out. I want to do something else. Well, often people are scared because they don't want to lose that money. But that's not really the reason because, well, you're doing this to make money, but you're not making enough money. So the very reason you don't have money is because you're doing it. I mean, do, do you see the circular uh, argument here? It's, it's a vicious circle and it, it, it sucks you in. Nothing is challenging about this. There's nothing interesting about doing something you don't enjoy. So what is the alternative? You do something that you enjoy. But most people, just like when I was a kid, I never know what I wanted to do. I don't know what I like. I thought there's something wrong with me because all the other kids, they had it figured out. I mean, I want to be a doctor. I want to be an engineer. I didn't know what I want to be. So how do you know what you want to do? How do you know what really, really attracts you? You've you got you to try it on. There's no, there's no better way to do it. You've got to experiment. So the, first, the very first step that you need to do is you quit your boring job. Once you do that, you go and you try something different and something else and something else until you find joy in something that you do. And then, guess what? You will make money. Because if you do something that you enjoy, you do it well. And a well-done job pays you a lot of money. You would be surprised. I mean, people pay money for a well-rendered service. It, it, it's really that, that simple. Money-making is not rocket science. You just do something that you enjoy. As a result, you will be rich. The other day, I had a plumbing problem in my house. So I called the plumber. And the plumber came. He didn't do a good job. The same problem occurred. I called another plumber. And the new plumber came, and it was, I tell you, it was the most beautiful scene I've seen in my, he made love to my sink. I mean, he did the job perfectly. It was flawless. He enjoyed his job. There's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with being a plumber and you enjoy plumbing? You can do that in, in every aspect. Guess what? I know, I know bloggers. They're not even talented. You know, they just sit at home wearing a sweater 
typing away, you know, with like Doritos dust on their T-shirt, and they make more money than five engineers. So what is it about your boring job that keeps you coming every single day? Think about it. What are you doing? What are you achieving doing that job? Quit it. What's stopping you? What is stopping you? Isn't it lovely to go to sleep not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring to you? Here you go. So that's what you need to do. The first step, you quit your boring job. Second step, you try different things. Go ahead, try. Be a plumber. Be like that plumber. Try something, you know? When you enjoy it, you keep doing it. And it doesn't feel like a job anymore. It's your lifestyle. You become that guy which you look up to when you were a kid. So for me, my experience was I quit my boring job. I was scared to death. I really was so afraid. I was never that afraid in my whole life because I was relying on that money. I quit my job and I started a business with a couple of beautiful individuals. Now we have a multi-million dollar company. So I guess what I want you to do is to change. Don't be afraid. There's nothing to lose here. What are you going to lose? Your studio apartment? You're not going to lose that. You can do anything else. You can, there are food critics on the internet. You can do that. It's, there's only so many options. So the disconnect from reality, you go about your day every single morning and you have this feeling that it's not you who's doing that. Like, like your consciousness is somewhere in your head. We often feel that, don't you? Like when you think about yourself, you think that yourself is located somewhere in your head. And that is a disconnect from reality. There's no physical place for your consciousness. There's only your experience. So if you have a bad experience every day, you're depressed, you can stop that. You have the option. Just stop it. Stop it. Find something that you love. Do it. You do it well. It brings you money. So in conclusion, I just want you to know that it's really warm and fuzzy feeling that when you change something that you hate so much, it's liberating. And you go to bed and you don't know what tomorrow holds. And you conduct yourself as best as you can. And you become rich as a result. That's all. It doesn't matter what rich people do. I see those textbooks, you know. People go and read like the daily routine of Steve Jobs. It doesn't matter. Why does it matter? I mean, like Warren Buffett, the guy eats breakfast at a deli. He pays like $3 for a meal. That is not what it's like being rich. That is his experience. It doesn't matter what they do. There's no secret. They just do what they love. Can you name one millionaire who's doing something they don't enjoy? Guess what? They don't exist. They all do something that they like. That's it. This is the money-making equation, folks. Solved. Settled. So, those were some of my ideas. I hope they were worth sharing. Thank you so much for being here. Bye-bye.